Hey guys, in this video we are continuing with the space infections. But before we begin, I would like to suggest that you watch the video on fascial layers of the neck so that you can understand the boundaries that we will be talking about today very easily. Now let's move on to one of the most frequently encountered space in dental clinic that is the pterygomandibular space. Most commonly the source of infection is from the mandibular third molar and this space can also be infected by using contaminated needle during inferior alveolar nerve block. Septic fractures of the mandibular angle can also be the source of infection and infections from other spaces like superficial temporal space can spread to this space. Now let's understand the boundaries of this space. Laterally there is the medial surface of the mandible and medially there is medial pterygoid muscle. Inferiorly there is the pterygomasseteric sling. This sling is formed by the medial pterygoid and masseter muscle. And superiorly we have the lateral pterygoid muscle. Posterior border is formed by the parotid gland and its capsule and anterior border is formed by pterygomandibular raphi. The pterygomandibular raphi is where the buccinator and superior pharyngeal constrictor muscles meet. Now the contents of this space are quite easy to remember. When we give the inferior alveolar nerve block, this is the space we enter. So this space contains inferior alveolar nerve and artery, lingual nerve, long buccal nerve and nerve to mylohyoid. Clinically, when this space is infected, there will be trismus because of the edema and inflammation of the medial pterygoid muscle. There will be pain at the retromolar region that is behind the molar. The patient will have difficulty in swallowing. We can see swelling near the anterior tonsillar pillar and deviation of ovula to the opposite side. These are the characteristic of infection in this space. Also note that there will be no obvious swelling extraorally. Generally, incision and drainage are done through intraoral approach, but if there is significant trismus, extraoral approach is indicated. In the intraoral approach, a vertical incision of 1.5 cm is made at the anterior and medial aspect of the mandible. Sinus forceps is inserted into the abscess cavity and pus is evacuated. Corrugated rubber drain is inserted and sutured to the margins of the incision. In the extraoral approach, an incision of 1.5 cm is made on the skin at the angle region. Sinus forceps is inserted towards the medial aspect of the mandible, directing superiorly close to the bone. Then pus is evacuated and rubber drain is inserted as usual and sutured to the margins of the incision.